Hello everyone, I hope you're all having a wonderful day today. So today we're going to talk about the books that I read in April. Was that last month? Um, we're going to start with the comics so that it's easier for people who just come here for the comics or just come here for the books to just skip this part. All timestamps are left down below as usual. So the first book I read was Minecraft Volume 2. This is kind of like a mini comic about these friends who keep in touch through Minecraft. It is illustrated by Sarah Grayley, which is my favorite like comic book illustrator. For now at least, wait, that's volume one. This is volume one. Did I just put back volume two? Well, I read volume two, okay? I'm not gonna get it. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I gave it three stars. It was kind of like a meh experience. I think I enjoyed it better than the first one because I like, got to know the characters a bit more. It was a fun time. Then I picked up my video game, Ate My Homework, one, oh, by Dustin Hunson. So the reason I picked up this one because I think the title is just so epic and so much fun. And I literally like just didn't look at the art ever. So this is originally published by DC and I've never read a DC comic before. There's like some references to um, the bigger universe, you know? But the thing that bothered me the most is like the art style is really not my thing it's like very bright and i think in particular like the color choice was just kind of off and like didn't really work for me but i gave it like 2.5 stars i think the story was really fun but the fact that i just didn't click with like the color palette and the art style didn't really work for me um it is the title basically explains the plot it's about like this guy who needs to hand in his homework ella's being really loud but before he gets to hand in his homework his computer game, ESS homework. It's like this lava project, the classical, you know, science fair thing. Wasn't a huge fan. Then I read like my favorite book of all time. Like it's my favorite nonfiction. It's my favorite climate change book. It's my favorite activist book. It's my favorite fantasy book, even though it's not fantasy. It's my favorite magical realism book, even though it's not magical realism. Oh my God. And it's this Gorilla Green, an urban gardening survival guide. This is so good. Like if I had the finances, I would buy this book for every single person who wanted it and just send it to them because this was just amazing and I loved everything about it. So basically Gorilla Green is a movement. I think that started in Paris. She does talk about it in the beginning, but I don't remember at this point. I probably read this many, reread this many times where it's sort of a movement that is all about planting anything everywhere to further biodiversity in cities. So having like local urban um, food gardens, like planting places everywhere where there is space and grass you can plant. This is like a sort of civil disobedience because you're not actually asking per for permission to do these things. But there's just so many like amazing facts and research in this, like how important it is and how this could like, you know, the food we could plant in like communal gardens could help like homeless people um, not starve and how it would be so great for like insects and bees in the cities uh, a place to where people can meet and do gardening together and there is just I just love everything about this like everything about this um, but it does go into so many things and it's just really funny as well and educational and I think it's translated from French and the illustrator is just really really good and so funny like the illustrations are so funny and i just love everything about this i highly recommend it it made me really want to go into the world and urban cities and do gardening after that i got um recommendation from sean from past story time my boyfriend is a bear uh by pamela ribbon and kat ferris absolutely adored it i thought it was so cute this book is so cute like it's just about this girl who befriends a bear and they move in together and they have like such a lovely relationship. And it's kind of like also about like her friend who's like, this is very weird. Um, but it's just such a lovely story and the ending was great. It's just really, really cute. Like it's just really cute. Um, but the bear is kind of like not a normal bear. Like don't bring a bear to your home. You know, like it like, it's kind of like a human, but it's a bear. Loved it. This is just so cute. I'll give you guys a sneak peek of the art style. 
it's so cute. I adored it. Then I finished like this series. I actually read the second one last month, but for some reason I didn't add it to my Goodreads, and so I just completely forgot it existed. Uh, and then there's a third one, Gunland. So this is kind of like, uh, what is this? It's a trilogy that is basically about these cowboys. It's like a Western, but it's also like with dinosaurs and like guns but also like magical realism and like indigenous people that exist in like another realm because they've like transcended this planet. Like there's so many cool things in this, like it's just an ep epic like thing. I was a little bit surprised in the third one that it was the last one because there's a lot of threads and oh my God, Ella, can you hear that? There's a lot of threads going on like plot lines and I feel like, there's a lot of threads and plot lines that I feel like didn't exactly get wrapped up in the way that I thought and I still had like a lot of questions but I just really like the series and I think it's like very unique and very well done and underrated and it's kind of like very clever in the way that it's illustrated because like every third page is like a different scene and they're all connected in a way where like if it was edited into a TV show it would just be a very well constructed so I think maybe like it works better as like a cartoon show instead of like as a comic because it's almost like a little bit too clever to be a comic you know like it would be better to have it visually and then the scene shifts would have made more sense because it does take like a little mind work to like keep up but I think this is a great series I think it's like a uh, 3.75 stars all in all because also like the art style is just really amazing I love it a lot. Uh, the only thing that I thought was a bit weird that I kind of like reacted on is that one of these people can do like this school magic and one of the characters, this person right here, you see he's like turning black and then here he is like, he's full on like black. And I feel like that was weird. Like he, he uses his magic and then it like overpowers him and he becomes sort of evil and he turns black. Like, I know that black is like a, a sign of like evil, like demons, whatever, but he's not even like black black. He kind of looks like very dark brown. And I just feel like that wasn't good. Like why not turn him like dark purple, you know? Like it's just, I feel like a little bit perpetuous the stereotype that like being black is like evil in some sort of way. I don't know, or like, symbol of bad and like Ella won't give up. Oh my god, Ella! Ella! What do you do? So I kind of just didn't like that because it was unnecessary and I don't know if it comes from like a place of racism but I just didn't like it. Which I think is like the biggest con I have so far in this series. Or so far, it's done. Checking. Now to get to the actual books I read this month. Um, I read these three pocket books. I'm Afraid of Men by Vic Victrea. Uh, Beyond the Gender Binary by Olof Vaid Manon and How to Stay Sane in an Age of Division by Alif Shafak. These were all like really amazing. I did a reading vlog on it and actually I'm just gonna go and tell you to watch it and all of the timestamps are in that video if you want to know any more of my opinions on it. I give this four stars, like 4.5, five stars, adored it, cried with this one, but they were all just really great and I loved reading them and I had recommend all of these. Then I picked up Care Work, Dreaming Disability Justice by Leah Lakshmi Piesma Samarasina. So yeah, I didn't look up how to say that, unfortunately. This book is, yeah, it, it's Dreaming Disability Justice, just how care work is done, care work between people who have disabilities, people who are, like able-bodied and disabilities. It talks about like the intersectionality between many different things and disability. I found this book really important. I think it also could have been written in like a more Ella. I also feel like it could have been written in like a better way because the book starts off the author talking for a long time about like this is what the book is about. This is what the book is going to be about. And it like the introduction goes on for too long. I'm like just talk about what you're going to talk about. Like don't tell me. Just just tell me, you know. Uh, <laughs> There were some really important points. I really liked it. I don't know if I gave it like four stars or five stars, but I recommend this and I read it as an audiobook or listened to it as an audiobook and the author reads it herself and it also talks about like the intersection between queerness and disability, which is like a very important point and something I really love, adored about this one. I found it very interesting. I learned a lot. I learned, I learned a lot about trauma. I learned a lot about myself and my own traumas and 
viewing them through like a disability mindset. I just liked this a lot. And I think it was very important. And the author like um, referenced like braiding sweetgrass and a lot of other things. And also like being like black or um, POC or QT BIPOC places and how important they are and like lots of different places and stuff. Blah. Uh, something I actually didn't, haven't thought about, but something that I'm definitely going to be more conscious of is like, if you know, for example, that a bar doesn't accept like, I don't know, Asian people or like is racist in some way, like you wouldn't go to that bar. But if the bar is doesn't have like accessibility and is kind of ableist, you wouldn't think to boycott that bar. And just like this mindset of like supporting places that are um, accessible and I haven't really thought about that before in that sense so I really liked a lot of things that thoughts that it triggered in my mind I never like think about what I'm gonna say in this videos so I just talk so you get what you get there's a million other people who are better at talking about shit than I am on this 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 platform here we have defect by Nino Capri this series is so much fun I love this so much like I know this series is like not my favorite and not like the best thing ever and like the best written thing ever, but it's just so much fun. Like it's like the perfect balance of like commentary, anti-capitalist, like super diverse and like in the middle of it all, like in just an adventure. Plus it's like so fucking hilarious. Like the series is so funny and just like all the commentary and little bits and pieces that are like sprinkled in there. It just makes it so much better. But this is the second one in the series. It's about kind of like this Ikea-like world and how wormholes open up in them and like how the employees like kind of have to deal with like all these like magical shit that happens in the store. It's really funny. And this one, I uh, kind of follow a different character called Derek. Uh, Derek is another employee and so kind of Jules and I always forget the main character of Finna the first one. They're kind of out of the story. And then this one you follow like Derek. It has non-binary rap, it has like trans women rap, just stuff. I, I liked it a lot. It was a lot of fun. It's just so much like if you just if you need like short fun, something that's like just like hits you in the right places. I highly recommend this one. It's a it's a great series. I mean I should after that, I listened to The Subtweet by Vivek Shreya. I've heard a lot of great th things about this one. And I also heard that it's on Spotify. So I listened to it on Spotify. The only thing is like Spotify doesn't remember which chapter you're on. So you have to like remember what chapter you're on. If you exit Spotify, like listen to something else. But I really liked it. It took me a while to like realize like which characters were like trans and which characters were like of color or black. And it took me a minute because I feel like it wasn't very clear and like the controversy of it all. But basically it's about this one person who has like darker skin than another artist and how like this artist basically kind of steals this other one's music or profits off of her, our main character, Nip. When Nila Devaki's song is covered by internet famous artist Rukumi, the two magicians meet and transformative friendship begins. So basically it's about the friendships about these two, I think, black trans women. I think they're both black and trans. And how like one kind of ends up taking advantage of the other one, but subconsciously like I think that's what the book is about I feel like it could have been clearer or maybe I'm just like really dumb I'm not sure but yeah I liked it I gave it like three stars but my favorite thing is that the song that like the whole that starts the plot of this book is actually a song that exists that Vivek Shreya has written called every song and I love it I love the song so much I listen to it all the time and I just love when that happens when like the music actually exists to a song that's written Love it. Then I finally finished The House of Impossible Beauties. Beauties. <laughs> I finally finished The House of Impossible Beauties by Joseph Kessara. Kessara. I liked it. I think the, the biggest problem with this book is that there's no plot. There's no plot. It follows this Latinx uh, drag house or ballroom house in New York. Just like their struggles, their traumas, their um, joys, their friendships and these different people who kind of meet and how their stories intertwine, how their stories leave off from each other. I liked it. I feel like it's a bit overhyped to be honest. Like I know it's not super hyped, but I'm not sure I get it. Like there is not no plot really. It's very character driven. And I think the characters, especially in the beginning is a little bit more 
convoluted than they have to be. I was in a mood. I didn't think I was crying. I'm like, why do people think this is so sad? Like, obviously it's sad because like literally everyone dies. Spoiler alert, I just spoiled you. But I did cry at the last page. I'm like, this is very sad. Um, but I think it's very interesting and an important book. But like, I think Pose is better. I can't believe I said that. I really appreciate this book though. I, I highlighted like a lot. There was a lot of great quotes and just these people, like how strong and kick-ass they are, I think is incredibly inspiring. After that, I read The Album of Dr. Moreau by Daryl Gregory. So this follows this band that are like these human-animal hybrids and they're all like a different animal. They have this band together that's like a little bit One Direction-y style and there is a murder that happens at a hotel where they are staying of their manager and our main character is kind of the police woman who have to like figure this case out. It's very slow for a very long time. I kind of like the resolution of like uncovering all these like plots and interviews that have been going on through all the whole story. I kind of like the ending and like the resolution but I just feel like it should have that enjoyment and like that magical realism part and like those great things should have like happened much sooner and it should have been much more interesting much sooner because it's very slow and it doesn't go anywhere and then the ending is just like oh okay I guess that's the answer so I think I gave this three stars it was fine it was fine but it was like one of my most anticipated books of the year so I was very disappointed great been talking for 22 minutes we have three more books to go the next one I read is no one is talking about this by Patricia Lockwood <laughs> This book, like, what is this? Like, what is this book? For those of you who give this five stars, like, explain it to me. Like, what is this book? Okay, just, what is it? Because it says it's, uh, as this urgent, genre-defying book opens, a woman known for her viral social media posts travels the world speaking to her adoring fans. Like, if I would have not read that on the back, I would have had no clue what I was reading, okay? It's just these, like, paragraphs of excerpts and thoughts that she has about life and social media. And I know this is supposed to be deep, but oh my God, I laughed so much. Like this book is fucking hilarious and I'm not sure it's supposed to be, but it's so funny. Like this is so funny. I think it's supposed to be like deep commentary or it's kind of like a joke of the deep commentary and I'm supposed to laugh, but I don't know which one. <laughs> but this was just like outrageous. But I like, but I kind of loved it. But then the ending gets super sad and super deep and I kind of felt bad that I had like taken this whole like book as a joke and was laughing all the time and I'm like, oh god, this is actually serious now. Um, <laughs> so funny! Like, if you thought this book was funny, let me know. Like, I think it's... This book is so crazy. I'm glad I read it. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. Then I listened to another audiobook, He Said, She Says by Gigi Gorgeous. So this month, actually, I've discovered YouTube. Um, YouTube is like this platform where content creators get to share videos about their life and all that stuff. So me being on this like other platform called BookTube was like, hey, YouTube sounds a lot like BookTube. Like I should probably check it out. And there's like famous people on there and people actually earn money on there. And then I discovered like all the cool trans people that are on this YouTube, as they call it. And I discovered Gigi Gorgeous and I'm like, oh my god, this is a famous trans person. I actually discovered her through God Make, <laughs> so I ended up watching all of Gigi's Gorgeous videos just to get like a two second glimpse of God Make in there somewhere or Kate in there somewhere. Do I have an obsession with God Make? Uh, absolutely. Is it too much when I start reading the biographies of the people he knows? You tell me. Um, <laughs> oh God. Um, I gave this three stars. It's fine. Gigi Gorgeous like narrates it herself and her voice is just hilarious. And there's some parts like where she's kind of this like Barbie doll joke, but it's even more funny because she's like actually like that. Like she's authentic to that person, um, you know, which I think is like part of what intrigues people about her. But like, I've watched all her videos at this point. Yeah, and then we have the last book I'm gonna talk about in this video, which is A Room Called Earth 
by Madeline Ryan. Okay, sorry, I just had to find the person who initially recommended this book to me. I, I literally screenshot and record everyone's stories. Like, I mean, you put it on the internet, that's your fault, um, if you feel violated. Okay, so drink, read, drink, travel posted like a story that said this one, I'll put it on the screen. Uh, well, y'all, the inside of this lives up to the outside. And then I completely forgot about this book. Then I went to like my local indie bookstore that I really like, Arc Books. You can check out the blog where I visit that bookstore. It's awesome. And I kind of saw this book and I'm like, wow, this cover is stunning. But then I didn't remember that I had screenshotted like this post before. And I just bought it. A Room Called Earth by Madeline Ryan. This was so good. Like... Like, this is me in a book. Like, I know this 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 person and, like, the main character in this book is, like, autistic. But this book had me, like, questioning my own neuro neurotypicalness. Because I could, like, relate to this character. Like, this was inside my mind. Like, this character was me. It was such a weird experience. I know, like, not exactly. Like, this character did some things that, like, I would never do. But still, like, this character is basically me. I could just relate to this character so heavily. I love this book so much. It's such an easy read. It's so fun. It's one of those books where, like, nothing really happens. You're just following... Uh, our main character goes to a party, like a Christmas party. She stays there for a bit and then she leaves the party, goes for a walk, she goes back to the party, then she goes home. And that's the whole story. Um, I just told you what happens in the whole book. But then her internal world is like so interesting and rich and the things that she thinks about, the reflections she has are just like amazing and I loved it so much. I would be surprised if this did not show up at like my favorites of the year. I obviously can't speak on the neurodivergent parts of this book or the autistic parts of this book, clearly, but I loved it a lot. I liked it a lot, a lot, a lot. I'm gonna read you some quotes. In the beginning though, there is a romance towards the end. And I'm like, oh no, is this book about to go down? Like, I absolutely hate when a book has romance. I mean, are we surprised? Not really. Being solely attracted to men sucks. It's like su suffering from an irreversible case of Stockholm Syndrome. <laughs> like this, this, this main character writes stuff like, anything can happen from here and I'm in love with myself. <laughs> That's like literally what I tell myself when I go into a party. I'm like, anything can happen from here and I love myself. <laughs> It's strange to think that we're all here because someone wasn't killed at some point. It's, it takes place in Australia and talks a lot about like indigenous things. He must be doing a lot of drugs. I've never seen him in sandals with socks before. <laughs> if any of these quotes speak to you, I highly recommend reading the book. This is so me, like whatever universe. I refuse to believe that the lesson of this experience is don't walk alone at night or don't walk alone at night without telling anyone because having to report my whereabouts to I don't know who around the clock kind of minimizes the multidimensional nature of my existence and positions life in a slightly more dystopian reality than the one I'd like to live in. Oh my god, this book is just so good. I loved it. I loved it so much. It's it's also before I before I leave you, I know I've been talking about this book a lot now. Before I leave you, I also want to mention that this is like very feminist focused and like female empowerment and I love that a lot. So those were all the books that I let, read last month. I know this was a long video. I hope you enjoyed. Comment down below your thoughts on any of these books. If you read them or tell them, tell them, them. <laughs> tell me about any books that you read that you really enjoyed last month. I hope wish you all a uh, happy pride. Even though it's not pride in Denmark. I forgot to say that. It's pride in August in Denmark. But I'll see you guys soon. Sending you all so much love. Enjoy your day. Enjoy the sun, the rain or the gloominess, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.